let's move on a little bit now and look at um, taking the sort of utility issue a bit further and looking at the shared services model. Um, uh, you sort of talked earlier about how the banks need to retool, but also they need to rethink about, um, you know, how they conceptualise, how these processes are undertaken. Um, are you seeing much of a shift now in the back offices in that respect? Have people sort of woken up to the issues? No question. I mean, I think we, I mean, we, we, we see it first on the, on the reference data side, where when you have 200 security masters, 300 security masters within the bank, I mean, the, 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 there's no way out, right? You, you can only, the only way out is to externalise these services. Same thing for post trade processing. If you have hundreds, hundred different distributed groups doing doing the same thing and trying to move to to a, to a shared service model, it's it's much easier to do it uh, outside, and especially as we line up with the other utilities available in the marketplace like uh, clearing and uh, liquidity pools. Mm -hmm. um, what are the kind of is there like a migration challenge there for the banks in mm -hmm. in externalizing these services? What kind of steps do they have to go to mm -hmm. to achieve that? Well, I mean. There's, there's two choices. Either you, you can use as a, as a service, or so, so for as a service where you train the operations, and there's no, no migration in that sense, or we can we do lift out of the data operations and basically serve serve the um, serve the data on, on the services. Uh, the, the way they expect it to, to be in the first place. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the migration is very light. Mm -hmm. And what do you think? What factors would determine whether or not you go for one model or another model? It's it's. Um, it's a choice of the, the, the bank or how much how much of the operations they want to, mm -hmm. to relinquish. Mm -hmm. So some banks might prefer to retain a little bit more control than yes. other banks, for example. Also, it might be a step function, and they, they, they want to make sure that we, we're delivering the same quality or higher, and over time they will transfer some of the operational uh, aspect to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when you go and talk to the banks, do you think um, the, the issue that's driving them to make the changes, is it more operational risk, or are they more incentivized by cost and efficiency? Uh, today, I would say cost and efficiency is mm -hmm. a big, the big driver. Uh, they, they, are, they, they have, to, to, have a, to, to make drastic changes in their, in their cost structure. Mm -hmm. And the, the front office, I mean, the front office is footing the bills for the, the back office, and they, they, they need to basically sort, sort out the, the efficiency issue very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So um, you just mentioned there that you have to change the cost structure. Uh, are there any sort of pressures on the other side? So, for example, um, we all know that certain types of trading become commoditized over time. So is there a constant pressure on the other side that the margins on the other side are also being reduced and that's making the whole sort of um, cost of the process greater, proportionally speaking? Uh, no, no question. So when, when you run all these processes in-house, I mean, your cost structure is pretty much fixed. Mm -hmm. So if you have um, a drop in, in volume, well, the, the, the cost remains the same, which means a, a very, very large exposure. Uh, we, we, we offer uh, a pricing model that's based on transactions, so you only consume what you use and according, I mean, and according to the number of transactions. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also quite interested in the, the mm -hmm. geographical issues here. Um, so, for example, we all know <coughs> in Asia that uh, labour is cheaper, mm -hmm. so you can kind of you can get staff in to scale up and scale mm -hmm. down, and that perhaps there hasn't been um, such a motivation to try and automate things when you know, you're able to um, pay less for those kind of services. So just in, in your experience, um, how, did the, how did sort of the issues divide up geographically, and do you think that other regions are also starting to take the same view? Well, so I, was, I mean, I think the, 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 the location of the staff is... It doesn't matter as much as, as where, where the um, sophistication of the bank lies, I mean, because obviously a lot of the uh, U.S. and European banks have uh, uh, offshore their, their, the back office to India, so they, they get the same, uh, the same uh, cost benefit. I think the, the issues are more in terms of um, how much legacy system do you have in place, how inflexible or flexible these systems are, and how they can adapt to uh, new, uh, new asset classes and new, new uh, structured products. Mm -hmm. And th that's, that's where the difficulty lies for, for the bank. So if, if, if they, are, they are very sophisticated in terms of products, they, they, need, they need to retool. Um, I mean, m much much quicker than others. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mentioned the dreaded words, legacy systems. Mm -hmm. There, um, it, uh, generally speaking, to banks in less mature mm -hmm. or developing markets, have fewer legacy systems, or is that a bit of a myth? It's a, well, no, it's, 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 it's not a myth. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mixed bag. I think mm -hmm. there's still in the US and, 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 uh, and in Europe a lot of um, a lot of legacy systems. A lot of the outsourcing uh, players themselves are running on legacy systems, so they're, they're creating a lot of issues because they are again they're batch. Uh, batch uh, uh, processors, and the world needs real time. Mm -hmm. um, and um, generally speaking, the uh, success of moving to a kind of shared services model, presumably, as we were kind of discussing earlier, requires 
it's not good enough if only two people subscribe to it, right? Mm. Because you're only as good as your counterparty's yeah. back office. So how can the industry hope mm. to kind of create a bit of critical mass behind the model? Well, for I mean, re reference does is supposed to have the trade break. So if you can convince a few hundred clients to 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 run their their reference data of the the utility uh, for utility model, immediately we can we can I mean theoretically we can reduce half the cost of mm -hmm. processing trades out of the box. Um, we also have um, announced a deal with uh, Swift a few months ago. We have put our TLM engine directly on Swift network. So same idea here. We hope to achieve a network effect where we can get the banks to, to basically process their trades directly on the network and eliminate the breaks before they happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Philippe Chamadel, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks very much for listening.